Hello friends. So welcome to lecture number four for the chapter number five combustion in SI engines. So in previous three lectures we studied the stages of combustion, ignition lag, factors affecting flame propagation and factors affecting flame speed, abnormal combustion or knocking, auto ignition, pre ignition, influence of engine design and operating variables on knocking and octane number. Now today's lecture we will discuss HUCR requirements of combustion chambers of SI engines and its types and MCQs that I will share on the Google classroom. So let's discuss the HUCR that is known as the highest useful compression ratio. So as we know that the resistance to knocking is an important property of fuel for SI engine. Resistance to knocking is, is an important characteristics for SI engine. So these fuels available for SI engine they are differ widely in their ability to resist the knocking. Means different fuels having the different that knocking that resistance characteristics and that are they are widely available. They are widely available and that will be depends upon the various factors like chemical composition or chemical properties of fuel, air fuel ratio, ignition timing, engine speed, shape of the combustion chamber, how it going to affect the knock in the engine. So likewise the different parameters are to be considered so that it will avoid the knocking, it will resist the knocking. <coughs> so in that previous lecture we discussed the octane number or fuel rating. That is one of the satisfactory method nowadays it is to be used for comparing the anti knock qualities of various fuels. Getting to compare the anti knock quality of the various fuels, this octane number that rating is to be used. So, in the earlier days, the HUCR rating is to be used for the that uh, fuel that is used for the SI engine. So, in HUCR, in development of SI engine, uh, it is desirable to use the highest compression ratio. It is desirable to use the highest compression ratio engine because it will give us the higher thermal efficiency. It will give us the higher power output. Heading. So, maximum compression ratio means maximum thermal efficiency, maximum power output. But as we know that the maximum compression ratio for any SI engine is limited by its tendency to knock by tendency to knock and because of that <coughs> the previously the rating of SI engine was based on the highest useful compression ratio. So, in earlier days the rating of SI engine is based on this compression ratio that could be employed in given engine under the given set of condition. So, how to find out the HUCR, how to find out the HUCR of any particular SI engine. So, to find the HUCR the compression ratio of that particular engine is increased till the knocking becomes audible getting till the knocking becomes audible under the specific set of conditions getting under the specific set of conditions I mean under which the fuel used the under which the uh, shape of the combustion chamber under which the speed ignition speed under which the spark timing all that are kept at the specific that conditions at given specific set of conditions getting and during which we are going to increase the compression ratio till the knocking becomes audible. When knocking becomes audible at which compression ratio that will indicate the compression ratio for that fluid used for that particular engine <coughs> getting. So, the measurement of this HUCR is done on Ricardo E6 variable compression ratio VCR engine variable compression ratio. So, in this table you observe the typical values for different fuel is to be mentioned. Typical values of compression ratio is to be mentioned. For example, normal heptane is having the highest useful compression ratio 3.75 means if you are using the normal heptane fuel in SI engine then compression ratio is limited to the 3.75. If the compression ratio is 4 what happens? If compression is 3.8 what happens? Your engine tends to knock. Your engine tends to knock. So, at 3.75 the 
no detonation or knocking becomes audible that's why it is a 3.75 its highest useful compression ratio beyond 3.75 the engine becomes the knocking engine uh, goes to the detonation and it becomes the audible noise it creates the noise and that abrupt pressure pulses as uh, we have discussed in knocking whatever the consequences are there that should be happening in that case second cyclohexane its highest useful compression ratio is 8.2 iso octane 10.96 benzene 14.6 toluene 15 so like this fuel is having its highest useful compression ratios getting so highest useful compression ratio that is used in earlier days which will gives us how much that compression ratio for the particular engine under particular set of conditions that is a concept of the hucr <coughs> now we'll discuss the fuel additives so the compounds called additives or dopes are used to improve the combustion performance of fuel so additives are used to improve the performance of fuels so the main combustion problems that arise when operating conditions or operating that parameters becomes the severe or unfavorable and tends to knock or ignition that right? pre ignition or at ignition so these combustion problems can be tackled by different methods by alternative methods such as improve the combustion chamber design such as improve the different parameters like air fuel ratio quality of fuel chemical combination chemical properties of fuel retard the spark lies various that alternative that methods are to be used one of the method is to improve the fuel quality by using the different fuel additives or dopes fittings means by adding such a fuel additives or dopes in the, the fuel it will improve the combustion performance of fuel so what are the different requirements of additives that in general requirements it should be a knock resistance it should be soluble in fuel under all conditions it should be stable in storage no any adverse effect on the fuel stability you should should be in a liquid phase at normal temperature and volatile to give the rapid vaporization in manifold it must not produce the harmful deposits likewise the different requirements we expect from the fuel additives so there are different that additives are there anti knock additives so that will avoid the knocking it will resist the knocking so such anti knock additives example tetraethyl lead tetramethyl lead toluene isooctane ferrocene likewise the different anti knock additives are to be used which is used to resist the knocking antioxidants to inhibit the oxidation of other molecules for example ethylene diamine butylated hydroxytoluene like antioxidants are to be also added oxygenates to reduce the carbon monoxide to reduce the soot particles in the exhaust due to the burning of fuel for example different types of alcohols methanol ethanol n butanol ether likes methyl tetrabutyl ether tertiary amyl methyl ether lead scavenger in earlier days of your vehicle such a leaded gasoline is to be used now we use the unleaded gasoline so this leaded scavenger is used with the leaded gasoline so it again to scavengers in chemistry is chemical substance it is added to the mixture to remove or deactivate the impurities and unwanted reactions for example oxygen like lead scavengers are to be used so by adding such additives we can get the better performance of the i will see the combustion chambers you see the combustion chamber so the design of combustion chamber has an important influence upon the engine performance it having the great influence on the engine performance at knock properties and its knock properties so the design of combustion chamber involves shape of combustion chamber location of spark plug deposition or deposition of the inlet and exhaust wall means that will indicates the design of combustion chamber shape of chamber location of spark plug exhaust wall inlet wall location because of importance of combustion chamber design it has been subject to considerable amount of research and development means different research and development is to be going on in the field of combustion chamber 
design it is very much that important because it highly influenced on the engine performance and knocking so in last uh, 50 years there is so many research is to be done in this particular area of the combustion chamber design and because of that it results in rising the compression ratio for si engine from 4s to 1 to the 11s to 1 getting so in other days si engine having the low compression ratio which is 4s to 1 but as a design that, that research and development is to be done in this particular area it is successful to use the si engine with highest compression ratio it is from 8 as 8 to as 8 to 1 to the 11 as to 1 so in present times such a combustion chamber design are available so the basic requirements for good combustion chamber are higher power output you should forward the higher power output means how we get the higher power output by high compression ratio small amount of excess air no dead pockets of air optimum degree of turbulence high volumetric efficiency by using such that methods we get the high power output then high thermal efficiency and low specific fuel consumption how we will get the high thermal efficiency so reduce the heat losses good scavenging of exhaust gases good swirl of flow in the chamber compact combustion chamber likewise different methods are there then smooth engine operation how we will get the smooth engine operation so by moderate pressure rise then avoid the knocking tendency compact design proper location of spark plug and exhaust wall getting so by that way we get the smooth engine operation then how we will get the that exhaust reduce the exhaust pollutants so exhaust pollutants again were avoids by the proper quality of fuel proper chemical properties of the fuel by which we are aware the exhaust pollutants as well as the exhaust <coughs> that emissions getting so the types of the combustion chambers so the few re representative types of combustion chamber here we are going to discuss t head combustion chamber l head combustion chamber i head or overhead wall combustion chamber f head combustion chamber so it may be known note that these chambers <coughs> are designed to obtain the objectives namely high combustion rate high surface to volume ratio rather also it has to locate the spark plug at the same these are the objectives for this type of combustion chambers so first we will discuss the t head combustion chamber so see the figure so its figure is having the shape t head so these combustion chambers were used the earlier stage of engines means at earlier stage so when first uh, motor or engine is to be developed by ford motor compression motor corporation in 1908 so this design was introduced by this company ford motor so earlier stage of development such a design is to be used so this design has the different disadvantages for example it requires the two camshafts as we know that inlet wall and exhaust wall both are located at the side of the engine means to actuate this wall inlet and exhaust wall separately we require the two camshafts getting so that is a one disadvantage then it also having very prone to detonation means detonation is suspectable in this case it is prone to detonation easily it going to detonate the engine so so there was violent detonation even with the compression ratio 4 means if we are going to use such chamber then compression ratio is limited to the 4 getting so because of that average octane so during that period also the fuel available having the octane number 40 to 50 that is also one that limitation during that earlier days as well as in this chamber the distance for flame tower across the combustion chamber also more getting why it is prone to detonation because as flame travel distance is to be increased means the time factor getting means time increases for the flame travel that tends to engine to the knocking that is the important that disadvantage with the t head combustion chamber so in earlier days such kind of that combustion chambers are to be yet with the engine. then l head type combustion chamber 
so it is again the modification in the T head combustion chamber. So it provides the two walls, that is the exhaust wall, inlet wall, on the same side of the engine. And again, the, these walls are again operated through the single camshaft. Getting so that is the one benefit of this type of that combustion chamber. This type of that combustion chamber. Again, this is introduced by the Ford model between 1910 to 30. Between 9, 1910 to 30, again there are different developments they are added with such kind of that combustion chambers. <coughs> Getting so that is the one important that advantage is that the combustion chamber are easy to lubricate. Getting or that is very easy to lubricate the wall mechanism and remove the cylinder head without disturbing the wall train. So here in that case you can easily remove the cylinder head without disturbing the wall train and to easily you can lubricate the wall mechanism. That is the main, main important that advantage with the system getting. Again the disadvantage of the design is that air flow has to take the angular turn as the inlet wall is at the side. So, it has to take the angular turn to enter and exit the cylinder. During the exhaust also, exhaust gases has to take the angular turn for the exhaust. So, this causes the loss of velocity and turbulence resulting in slower combustion. Because of that, the initial turbulence is lower and because of that, it causes the loss of velocity. And because of that, the combustion is the slower. Combustion is slower. As well as surface to volume ratio is more therefore more heat loss as surface to volume means surface area is more than the volume because of that what happens more heat is to be goes to the surface and that way the heat loss is more means thermal efficiency is a lower in that case getting also it is having prone to detonation because again the flame travel distance is more flame travel distance is a more time factor is again here and because of that it again causes the detonation as well as the lower turbulence is again the as turbulence is lower why because the whatever the at the inlet whatever the air fuel ratio is enters inside the engine cylinder it has to take the angular turn two times getting and because of that it creates the lower turbulence and as we know that turbulence is directly proportional to the that uh, trouble is directly affected with the detonation or knocking in that way the knocking is easily it is a add with the lower turbulence it occurs at the lower turbulence third one i head combustion or overhead combustion chamber so this is also called overhead overhead wall combustion chamber so in this case both walls are located on the cylinder head if you see the figure both walls are located in the cylinder head so the advantage of such combustion chambers are less heat loss. Heat loss is a less due to lower surface area. Surface area is less in this case. As in previous two cases, T head, L head, the surface to volume ratio is more. So in this case, surface to volume ratio is a less. And as surface to volume ratio is less, means the heat loss is a lower. And as heat loss is lower, means we can utilize this heat loss lower heat loss in the thermal efficiency increase in the thermal efficiency so less heat loss due to lower surface area because of the thermal efficiency is more as well as less flame, flame travel flame travel distance is lower so knocking tendency also lower getting locking tendency also lower volumetric efficiency also more as the inlet wall is located in the in the that cylinder head itself means again the volumetric efficiency is more means there is no air fuel ratio is not going to take any turn so directly it enters in the combustion chamber so volumetric efficiency is more getting also easier to manufacture easier to manufacture and low cost that is the main benefit so since 1950 and so mostly till date such that overhead or eye head combustion chambers are in use getting next f head combustion chambers so this combi this is a combination of l head and t head if you see this is a combination or compromise between l head and i head 
sorry which is a head not t head so this design is com compromised between l head and i head com that composite chambers so how it is compromised for example for example l head means in this case inlet wall is at the side it is located at the side and i head exhaust wall in the cylinder head so in that way it is a compromise or combination of l head and i head combustion chambers because one wall is in the cylinder head and other is in the cylinder itself so two camshafts are required again here two camshafts are required to actuate the inlet and exhaust wall which is a disadvantage which is a disadvantage so it's a disadvantage is high volumetric efficiency maximum compression ratio high thermal efficiency also it can operate even at linear air fuel ratio without misfiring drawback design is complex mechanism for operation of valves and expensive special sharp sharp special shaped piston that is a disadvantage again such a that type of the f head composite chambers are mostly used by the rover company they are till that is used for the rover as well as the village jeep rover that is a range rover jeep company also there so they are going to be used such a designs in their vehicles so such a f shaped composite chamber that is available in the various types of that engine that is used by the rover company and the jeep company getting so such that designs are available so here in the figure it shows that the f head used by rover company also f head used by the village company also. thank you so this is the end of this chapter that is a combustion si engine hope all of you are understand the different contents we discuss in the chapter so you can also read the notes carefully as well as listen the lecture carefully then it is very easy to get the concept about the various contents in the chapter thank you